We're live. All right. We've got a slightly different angle now, which I think I've turned all over the place because, check it out. Ta-da! Instant close-up. We can just, you know, toggle between them. Okay. I have all our parts and pieces ready to go. I made this clever little booklet just like that. And most of it's gonna go on with hot glue. Just to recap real quick, we're making a butterfly that starts as a caterpillar, right? So here's the caterpillar. It's gonna have a little toggle closure at the bottom so, you know, its innards don't show too much. And then it flips inside out into a cocoon. And of course, remember, this is still mid-construction, but ha-ha, hangs like that. And then it flips inside out. There's a little ribbon in here. And a few more fiddly bits now than before because I did stitch on the legs and the uh, antennae, as previously mentioned. Yes, thank you, YouTube. That's excellent. Okay. And I'm really excited to get everything stitched in place and finalized so that this part will be easier. Because you can see the cocoon and the butterfly body are still overlapping quite a bit. And when you go to flip it inside out back and forth, it gets kind of slidey, I guess, is how I would describe it. Anyway, so when it comes out, if it's been in a caterpillar for a while, the wings are all like small and then you kind of fold them out just like the butterfly wings drying and coming to life, which I think is really cool. And it's just fun, silly, fiddly. There are the legs. As mentioned, I did stitch those on and the antennae, which stand up pretty well. And then this part is going to, you know, be cinched in the middle right there, but it'll be good. Whew, it is gonna get hot in here very quickly. I might have to turn that AC back on. Goodness, okay. Oh yeah. So what to do first? I know we're hot gluing lots of things in place. I kind of want to get the caterpillar going. So I am going to flip this inside out. We'll tilt you down and get to work. And you flip this back inside out the other way. It does not have a pull ribbon on the other side. So it is a little trickier that way to pull out this way. However, because the cocoon and the caterpillar can both be, um, I guess, inflated or something at the same time, it allows so much more space in there to position the butterfly and really, you know, arrange everything in there so that it'll lay nicely. So the wings need to be stuffed down toward the tail quite a bit to make room for this larger portion of the cocoon at the top. So you can see I really, well, you can't see because I stuffed them down so far, but they're in there. Wings are in there. They're, they're in there, I promise. It's good. Okay. Anyway, we are focusing. We're focusing. We're good at that on the caterpillar for a moment. And I need to get this back up and running. We've got a little orange light that goes on and off, which I love about this guy because it really helps to know at a glance what's going on. And it's, you know, wireless, which also helps. I tend to trip over those things a lot. So that was a major selling point for me on that guy. The glue gun will be sharing space with the iron today so that we can get those wings, <clears throat> excuse me, to um, 
to really stand up. I know they'll get wrinkled again, but if the seams can be nice and just splayed naturally, I think they'll open up much better. Okay, so stuffing this guy in does take some finagling, one of my favorite words, which I think is fine because as a teaching tool, you know, you set it up like this and then the transition the other way is much smoother. So here we go. I can't really remember which side we decided was the face. I know that we did decide on one. I think it was the flatter of the two ends. So that guy's looking a little more round. This guy's looking a little flatter. So I think this is our face. All right, now you can see here, this is the caterpillar's face, doing little highlights on blue eyes. And then caterpillar mouths are like these funny little like, like mushy jaw things, I don't know. So he kind of looks like he has a handlebar mustache, which I think is just hilarious. <laughs> so we're going with it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, as soon as this guy starts, not, not quite dripping. It's just sort of like dribbling, but not fully dripping yet. That's how I know when my glue gun is hot, is hot as I want it to be. I wait for it to just automatically. Oh, pardon me, silence that guy for you. I wait for it to drop. As soon as a bit of hot glue just drops right down, then I know it is definitely hot enough. Move these guys aside here. And that guy should be hot pretty soon. The other things that I'm stitching on are the toggle closure and the proboscis. Those will be, no, you know what? Toggle, I think I'm going to be sewn on the sewing machine. Hey, guys. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Mikio. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm so glad you could make it in today, Jessica. I know it hasn't always been the easiest. We've got Caterpillar all set up, so I think I'm going to hot glue this face on first, and I'm just waiting for the glue gun to be ready. And then the little legs and things. I was originally going to stitch these on by hand, but I was thinking about how they would sit and they really need to be flat against the caterpillar's body so that they aren't sticking out when the cocoon is showing instead. Hey, Hannah. That's all right. No worries. I'm glad you could make it in. Should be hot soon. It's getting there. Yeah, this is, this is the last bit of it. We've got the elastic to connect everything once we don't need to get into the in-between portions. It's kind of a strange structure that way, so it'll be good. I like elastic. I'm so glad we have elastic. Pulling apart and eating glue. Afraid of kids pulling it apart. Um, no. I, I have made lots of similar things, not exactly like this, nothing quite this complex, but um, I have had things with kids playing with them quite a bit and the hot glue really absorbs into the felt. So the felt around the point of contact with the glue is more likely to tear in my experience. Uh, if you use the right amount and then, you know, kids are gonna put things in their mouths um, oh, well, I can, hi guys, <laughs> tilt you back up while we're just talking and waiting on the glue gun. Um, as long as you have the right amount of glue, usually the felt is more likely to tear first because the glue is just like 
in there, in the fibers, and it doesn't want to let go. So I'm not too worried about that. And this particular piece is also intended as a teaching tool more than anything. So it'll probably be passed around, and it's plenty sturdy enough for that. And to be honest, I kind of have this rule with myself, especially about prototypes and the first time I try something, if it breaks, then I'll know stress points to work on for next time and it's not a big deal. Um, how does it go? We kind of have this running joke around here every time we just like biff it or fail or something doesn't go the way we want it to, just fail harder. <laughs> like, just do it again, fail harder and figure it out. So I'm just gonna run with it. Hey, Bernie. Welcome, welcome. Waiting on the glue gun right now. Probably could have plugged that in before, but it's almost there. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get the caterpillar finished up because that's one of the simplest parts now. And then I can switch to finishing the butterfly, which I suppose while we're waiting on that, I can just flip this inside out the other way again. And we can hand stitch on the proboscis. No, we can't. What am I talking about? It has to be in that order. Okay, I already thought about this. I don't know why I'm questioning myself. Hot glue first, get all of those pieces in position. And then we're going to switch to the sewing machine because we have to stitch in the elastic and the toggle. I'm gonna to use the sewing machine for the toggle to make sure that's nice and secure. And I'll just stitch right over. Um, I have some leather cord that I'm using in this guy, and then stitch on the proboscis by hand, um, the same way that I did the legs and so on, because currently, we'll just go ahead and flip this anyway. Currently, I'm having a hard time really picturing and placing exactly where the proboscis will end up once the elastic is in place to, uh, you know, cinch in that end. So here, because I can kind of guess where the antenna need to be. And they just like pop up right there and they stand up pretty well. I'm, pr I'm pretty pleased with that. You know, might floppy, not a lot, just like that. And the rest of this, you know, the cocoon is gonna be stuffed up inside there and then this all cinches together. And then I've been looking at pictures of butterflies' faces. It's weird to call a bug's face a face, but it is basically their face. It's just eyeballs. It's like massive eyeballs and a proboscis. And they don't have any other mouth, but this butterfly is gonna have that sort of opening right there you know, by the nature of the transformative power of the crazy toy model thing. So I don't know, like, does the proboscis attach at the top or the bottom of the hole? I think the top, and then that'll kind of help to not really disguise, but distract from the hole to the cocoon, I guess. So, um, oh, let me catch up for a second. Oh, thank you. I found this in my closet. I was like, I should make use of that. It's just sitting there. I love to go thrifting a lot. And I found this one and I'm like, this is one of those things that I might never wear. And I'm just going to do it anyway because it's so awesome. I kind of feel like Miss Frizzle in it because it's like a classic sundress. Anyway. <laughs> Eagle eyes, yep. Attention to detail. It does help in crafting for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. I think I think we're hot here. Glue gun's ready to go. So I keep wanting to start with the butterfly here, but I know I need to do it the other way around. Okay. So flipping this back the other way. It's still such a relief to me every single time that it gets easier every time I flip it, just the general motion. And 
got to scooch everything down inside there. So the wings really get stuffed down to the back. So if they're sitting on the back like this, they get scooched down by the tail because there's still a lot of bulk from the cocoon toward the top that needs to fit into the rest of it. So it's like wings cocoon inside the uh, caterpillar. And I'm going to go ahead and tilt you guys down again so you can see. I think my box is sliding. I've got you propped on a box here so you can see. And, huh, all right. We'll just scoot it back a little bit. You can see that, okay. So stuff that down. And just like this, I keep, I stuff my thumb and pinky, I don't know if you can see that very well, but like this, and then push it in and grip it here and just goosh it so it all fits. And that is exactly the motion I do every single time now to get it to caterpillar. So, which side? Rounder side, tail, flatter side, face it'll add some interest and then this already looks like a natural caterpillar. Okay, definitely hot here. Got you guys, I think I'm going to glue the little bits and pieces together before putting them on the caterpillar, just in case I screw it up enough that I wanna start over. Unlikely, but you never know. So, definitely drop things, that's mandatory. Okay, so these little, little eyes, I can put, oh, you, get my little trimmers, could stand to be a little rounder. Don't mind me and my OCD tendencies with circles, okay. Hmm, this is the tiniest thing I have ever, ever hot glued in my life. Do you see that? Is that gonna, it's so bright, like, ah, maybe, probably not. Anyway, you can see the basic size of it on my finger and it's actually smaller than that because the light is blaring it out. So I'm hoping <laughs> I have some tweezers somewhere to hold that so that my fingers don't have to. And not seeing them. Hmm. All right, here we go. Next best thing again. Flyers. Okay. Pick this guy up. It's so tiny, but it makes a big difference on the shape of the eye and everything. It's kind of funny. And there's a little drip hanging out at the bottom. I'm not even going to pick up the glue gun. I'm just going to dab it right there in the dock. And then I'm going to drop it. Hot glue's still good. Okay. Might have to trim a little bit of the scraggly stuff. I'm just putting it right on the edge there. Yeah, I definitely don't want to burn fingers. Oh, man. Honestly, my fingertips have been a little desensitized to hot glue burns at this point. <laughs> but it does still hurt. It's not ideal. Okay. So there's one, just a little highlight up in the side in the corner there. And then, scoochy, scoochy. Okay, the other one, see I'm just holding it like that. Maybe this will show up a little better. There we go. That's the size of the thing. And these needle nose pliers are tiny. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Okay, teeny tiny little bit of hot glue. Tiny, 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 tiny. Get rid of that little hair that comes off and then turn it around and place it indiscriminately by the edge somewhere because when I go to 
uh, not stitch, but glue these on the caterpillar face, then I can arrange them and angle them the way I want. So with highlights and eyes, you don't want them facing the same way in toward each other. You want them in the same location, like the light is coming from over here and it's creating that, that glint or that accent in the same place, like up to the side. So I like it up in the corner, I think. The little um, traily like webby things that come off of them are catching on my fingers. <laughs> so every time I go to put it down, it's like <laughs> popping around. Okay, just like that. And then this part, uh, so the little, like the nose kind of, I'm sure it has a different, very official name for caterpillar land, but this is the mouth sort of thing. And I'm gonna glue these two pieces together before gluing it on. Cool, we'll see you in a bit, Bernie. <laughs> so, same deal. I haven't even needed to pull the trigger at all to release more glue yet because it's hot enough that it just kind of drips down and gets just the right amount. So I'm dropping this guy down, glue side up, and then I am going to just place this guy right over it and just dab. Teeny tiny little things. I don't think I could really hand stitch these pieces on if I wanted to, because for one thing, they're so small, but the stitches themselves would get in the way all over the place. So that would just be wild. All right, got a wild string. And away string. Here's our face, blank face, like a horror movie. Don't think about it too hard. Put them on cross eyed like, you know, that's one of my favorite things about felt is that it sticks to itself. So you can just pretend. <laughs> oh yeah. The light is right in front of my face. I'm definitely seeing the light. Don't go into the light. Okay, we're, we're being crazy. Just stick it on. Now, the caterpillar's mouth, showing up undercarriage. They're usually like way down at the bottom. So I'm going to stay. And then the eyes can come down. I'm working in reverse because of course the camera is like this is my right and that's my left. I know it's normal for you guys because it flips it but yeah. <laughs> um, it is kind of like a mustache like because like they have those gushy jaws. That's like, they're practically part of their body, but it's like a muscle jaw thing. And so it looks like a little mustachio. And that's the caterpillar. <laughs> so I think the eye placement is right. I don't know if I wanna make them cross-eyed permanently, but um, eyes, should they go down lower, more wide set? Should they be up higher? Uh, I don't know. I know the mouth needs to be pretty low there because that's just part of what makes a caterpillar a caterpillar. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that. Let me know what you think about the placement of the eyes. And we can see if we get a consensus going here. Okay. Get a little more glue coming out here. Just a bit. And then down at the base. I'm liking this camera thing better because I can show you guys up close more often, especially with all these detailed parts, whereas the construction was a little easier to see from far away, I think. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not on your side. <laughs> Let me know. There we go, okay, like that. So, 
mustachio jaw is in place. I'm gonna let that cool completely before I test it to see if it needs more glue or not. And let's see, Mikio likes eyes wide set. Wide looks more realistic, which given the combination of um, realistic features and silly features, I'm, I am kind of leaning wide set because the big like anime glint is pretty silly. So it kind of helps to balance it and pull it all together. So wide set like that, glint up in the corner. Yeah? What sound do caterpillars make? Do they make any kind of sound? Most bugs just make like, I guess sort of acoustic type sounds, right? I wonder if caterpillars make any particular sound. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so definitely wider set. I think we're ready to go. All right, I don't know how to like stand this up so I can get them in there. I'm gonna keep one on, remove the other one so that I know where to place it and then glue the other. I think that'll work out really well. And if you notice up close, this side of the face has more space to it while that side is much shallower. So I'm going by the center that has naturally occurred in the overall shape of it, as opposed to the literal center of this piece. And it just, you know, doesn't matter, but it's one of those things that if you pay super close attention or you're trying to recreate it or something that might seem wrong at first, or, you know, be off-putting when you're putting it together, but that's normal and it'll look fine. So I'm just letting you know that I that I recognize that here. Oh, what am I doing? I'm not taking that off yet. Okay. So here we go. One eye. This piece is a, a little bigger enough that I can go ahead and just hold it, which I do most of the time because it does give me a lot more control but if something is tiny or really thin, you just need to use tweezers or pliers to protect your fingers. Okay, now here's the tricky part. I'm noticing that when I go to press this eye, it's turning concave, but if anything, I want this eye facing out. So I'm stuffing my thumb inside here to help push it the other way convex. We want it sticking out like an eye. So I'm going to keep shaping and pushing this until I can feel that the glue has cooled so that it doesn't go too concave again. Just kind of alternating and flattening that down. Maybe pinky even smaller would help. Okay, that's pretty good. Ta-da! You wanna focus on something other than, there we go. Caterpillar kisses. <laughs> okay, let's do the other one. Caterpillar kisses. Would that be like baby butterfly kisses? Would they be sloppy like baby kisses? Cause like it's a caterpillar. I just picture caterpillar kisses being kind of sloppy. <laughs> what am I talking about? Okay. Butterfly kisses are cute. The kind with the fluttery eyelashes and the kind where like you go to a big butterfly place and one actually lands on you. They're so cute, you guys. Okay. Same deal. Shaping, shaping, shaping. You can also, um, when there's a dab of glue underneath and it's like thicker than you really need, you can push it around, like start in the middle and then flatten it out toward the center, different directions with, at first, not much pressure at all because you don't want to push all the glue in that one direction. But you can just, keep pushing it around. And then if you notice that it's starting to peek out at the edge anywhere, 
start the other way with your finger right at the edge and push it back up. And that can really help because hot glue and felt, once it's on there, you are not getting it off. Trust me, you're better off starting over. So you really wanna get the hot glue in the right place. If you don't know how much you need, start with too little and you can always add more up under the corners and crevices and things until it's all there. All right, our caterpillar has a face. Let's give it some pretendy legs. Is that what, what you called them, Bernie, right? Pretendy legs? Bernie had to go for a minute, right? Pretty sure. I hope I got that right. Okay, legs are going right on here, right up to the edge, and they're gonna be one set in the front and one set in the back, like so. So that it can do the whole, I don't know if I can do it with the legs on, but you know, this whole thing like That's my favorite part. That's my favorite thing that caterpillars do. You have to make that sound. That's the sound caterpillars make officially. It's decided. Caterpillars go ah, 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 and they give you sloppy caterpillar kisses. Okay. Now we are taking the glue gun off the base. And again, I'm going to put the glue on the piece itself, not on the caterpillar, to make sure I don't go too long or too wide, too high, whatever. I'm just going to make sure. And the feet on my gun is um, getting slippy so it doesn't always pull the glue through so sometimes I like stab it on my shoulder to get the stick back in so don't mind me like jerking the gun up like this constantly <laughs> trying to get it to feed through okay there we go got about, this glue is really hot, so I have some time to stop and show you with this. That's about how much glue I've put on this one. And then I'm gonna step over here for a second so you can see. I want that edge pretty close to the front, so I'm gonna start with that and just very, very, very lightly place it. You can see there's quite a gap so that I can kind of position it and there's a bit of glue. I just licked my finger and pushed it aside. Totally the official tool for scudging hot glue. Just lick your finger. Trade secret. Okay, I like that placement. I'm gonna start squeezing these together more. Blocking your light. Let's see. Like this. It's pretty good. That was easy. Bigger pieces are easy. Knock on wood. I've got a big chunk of glue coming out right there. Little scraggly bits. I'm going to leave that, let it cool completely, and trim it with scissors. E is sitting here watching with me. Hey, Elliot. <laughs> okay, stop picking at it. You're gonna cut it later, move on. Okay, here's another one. I like the smaller, thinner ones toward the front, so I'm gonna save that for the other side and use one of these slightly bigger ones for the back. I don't remember which we decided were the little nubblies and which were the pretendy legs. But we'll just say we've got little nubblies and little pretendy legs, and there they are. Caterpillar. Beep, 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 beep. Do this guy again. Let's go left handed this time, because why not? Just a bit of glue. It's easy to just wanna squeeze it and get it over with, but you don't want all that glue in the same place. Okay, and now placing it toward the back first. 
right down. Same amount of space as before. And see, I've got more green showing here, so I'm gonna scooch that down. Pull it over, that's better, okay. Press, press, press. Likes to poke up in the back. I think because I'm starting at this end, by the time I get back, it has more glue and it comes up a little bit. So I'll push some of that down. There we go. Glue is starting to build up on my fingers. There. There's one side. Stuff your innards back in. Get the ends. Like so. A little toggle in the middle and then skid your legs and a little face. This is so cool. Okay. All right, let's do the other side. And then we can see about sewing on the elastic and getting all of that put together. The butterfly wings do still need to be sewn on. I got the antennae and the legs stitched on, but the proboscis, the wings, and of course all these hot glue parts are what's left. So we are finishing this. It's gonna be so good. Put it up in the felt toy hall of fame, ha ha. No, it's good. It's gonna be in a classroom, people will see it. I'm so excited to show the kids, you guys. Okay, a big old glob there. I'm just gonna trail that down instead of adding more glue, just gently pull it along, which does gum up the tip of the glue gun, but it's kind of how it goes. Okay. Ever so gently. And I remember I placed it too, a little too high before, so I'm placing it lower than I need so that I can scooch it up instead because I'd rather the extra glue get stuck down in the seam than above it where it's more likely to be seen. Seam, seen, one with an M, one with an N. That's not confusing at all. Kind of looking at the bottom to see that these two are about even. Liking that. The more I think about it, this toggle in the middle might have to be hand stitched on because I'm not sure how I'm gonna get the machine there unless I just pinch this right out and stitch it directly, directly to it and create another seam. But if I do that, that method would be effective for the toggle, but when I flip it inside out, it would take away a little bit of room. So I'm not sure on that one. Okay. Biggest leg is to the back. So this way. So this way. Definitely did that the hard way. I want glue on this side of the piece of felt. That's what I'm getting at. Glue, 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 glue. I love this steam that it puts off. It's probably like toxic hot glue fumes. I'm glad it's wafting that way, but it reminds me of a cup of tea, but it's like craft tea. Wah, wah. Okay, I was so careful. Do you see that? It's a big leg in the back. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. I thought the face was over here. Whew, I thought I had it backward. <laughs> Never mind. We're good. You're bugging me, I'm gonna train you. Goodbye. All right. It needs a toggle, but aside from that, the caterpillar is finished. Hi guys. 
Kind of got to hold it further out now. Hi, Elliot. <laughs> okay. Stuff, 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 stuff. Now, what we have left is, oh, yes. Thank you, Hannah. Glue. Oh, and I'm not using my fancy trimmers. Where is junk scissors? Glue gets the junk scissors. Right in here. Cool. Just like that. See? If you really look in there, if I can hold it still, oh my goodness. If you really look in there, you can kind of see it. I just want to give you guys an up close what's going on. That white layer, it almost looks like another layer of felt. So, mission accomplished. Okay. Caterpillar is done. Maniacal genius caterpillar. Um, let's see. Saying that's Malcolm's mom. Yep, I'm Malcolm's mom. That's cute. <laughs> What's next? Okay, we're gonna hot glue the eyes. So at the very least I can get these secured to themselves. And this is gonna be hand stitched last. I don't know if I can put the eyes on before we stitch the elastic band or not. I don't know. But I did just remember, thank goodness, <laughs> that I should probably stitch the butterfly wings on before, no, hold on. Before I do the elastic, because I'm gonna wanna get my hand in here to make sure that I'm not stitching through other layers of the whole piece. So, I am gonna get the iron up here. We can go ahead and turn you off and unplug you. So you can share outlets with your brother appliance. And get that guy going. You can turn that around so you can see the little light and help me remember that's on. We're using it right now, so we should be fine, but you know, <laughs> safety checks. Okay, eyes. I am hot gluing these eyes together. Before I move that, let's get you. Focus, focus. I don't know what this ambiguous song is that I have stuck in my head. It's like this weird little blurb that I can't even put my finger on. Like, how does it go exactly? But it's on loop in my head. These are the butterfly's eyes. And the hot glue gun is still hot enough that I should be able to just get these prepared, you know, attached unto themselves. And then they'll be ready to go. I'll use pliers just for this piece. Boy, this guy heats up fast. Okay. Come on. Having one of those weird days where I think I'm actually steadier with my left hand than my right right now. I'm not sure what that's about. I'm technically right handed, but I am. Um, practice ambidexterity almost as a form of meditation kind of because of the focus it takes to like mirror image the muscles you're using so I'll do something with my left hand while I'm thinking about doing it with my right hand so that I can mirror that and the focus that it requires to actually pull it off is one of the very few things in life I've found that can help me to 
clear my mind and reach that sort of meditative state of just being calm and and more peaceful for a little bit, you know, to even out the day. And I've been doing this, like practicing this long enough at this point that sometimes, particularly when I'm crafting, like never really when I'm writing or anything, but sometimes it's easier with my left hand now. Weird things. Bodies are weird. I'm so glad we have them. Okay. So placing you. Oh, you can't go there. You're gonna block our vision. Get out. Butterflies have to see all the pretty flowers so that they can go and drink their nectar. It's very important. Okay. And then glue you up. Hmm. Okay, this is a tricky part. And here's why. They only overlap partially. So it's tough to know which piece to put the glue on. Do I put just a tiny dab across the lashes probably and then attach it and squish it up so that it overlaps fully or put some just on the top half of the eyeball and do the same thing the other way? I think I'm gonna put it on the lashes because it's more likely to be hidden that way. I had to switch from right to left for business. <clears throat> you copied music. Oh my goodness. Um, Wait, okay, so what about from left to right? Ah, what about copying music forced you to switch? How did you manage to do that? Because wouldn't that involve writing as well? That is fascinating. Here we go. Oh boy. Okay, this thing has been unplugged for a while and it is still super hot. Look at all that glue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was not intentional. Okay, so coming over again. I'm really digging this camera setup, you guys. This is so convenient. Okay, so place the eye like this. Make sure the, the iris is in the right place. And I'm gonna get some of that extra glue. And then at this point, I can kind of curl the lashes, like pinch that middle section up and push it so that they splay out a little more like that. Ta -da. Like so. Cute little eyeball. Cute blurry little eyeball. You see those um, butterflies in the background? that are like perfectly in focus. Aha, I jinxed it. Thanks camera. <laughs> okay. Write in both hands as a child. So it was easy to write with write as an adult. That's so awesome. Cool, we'll see you in a sec. I think as kids, we're inclined to just try things both ways, like whatever side of us a thing is on we just naturally use that hand for example or like if your mom is left-handed and she's carrying you on her right hip maybe your left hand is available more often or right hand or whatever it is I don't know but I wonder about that because we live in such a right-handed world and as kids get older like if they aren't naturally choosing one themselves a lot of the time an adult or a teacher without even thinking will just you know put the pencil in their right hand and sometimes I wonder when I'm doing this, if that is something that comes naturally to us as a whole, or if we've just chosen for language to be written from left to right, therefore it's more convenient to have, you know, the pen in your other hand so that you're not dragging it across, like something like that. I think it's fascinating. Anytime I see stuff about right and left, and they've actually disproven the bit about the left brain, right brain thing. Apparently, you actually use your whole brain for all of it. And maybe they'll prove it again the other way. Who knows? But just interesting things. Nerdy science. 
Okay, going really easy on the trigger this time because of how hot this thing still is. There we go. Okay, now that I have one eye placed, I am going to reference this heavily as I place my other eye to make sure that they are symmetrical to each other in terms of the angle of the lashes. And then as I put them on the butterfly, it will be easier. And with tiny little points of felt like this, you can just like pinch and pull them and shape them a little more and it usually keeps that shaping. Okay, I wanna squish you up and you down over there. Definitely gonna need to trim that glue. And nice. All right. Trim this. If that tiny of a piece of glue was somewhere else, I probably would have left it. But because it's on an eyeball specifically, it's more likely to be seen up close because you know we want to look at faces. So I definitely pay more attention to detail with faces than anywhere else. And I tend to pay quite a bit of attention to detail in general. So there we have the eyes. The iron is definitely hot. I can feel it from here. It's hot in here in general. It is definitely summer. Summer in the desert. It's hot. Okay. Eyes are set to go. Proboscis is set to go. Got my little thread all prepped. And get this guy back. Let's pop out these wings so that we can iron those and see if it'll hold. And if it does, and then we put it up aside again. I'll see if it sticks. Um, I think I already said that, like if it holds, if the ironing of the seams holds or not. And if it does, I think I'll go ahead and go back, do it again and spend a little more time to really train those seams so that over time in use, it will stay. So now that this has had time to fully set and cool, I'm comfortable turning it inside out. Let's check this out. It's a little concave face. <laughs> okay, easily amused. Sticking it in there. Here's that little rainbow tail. Pull it up. Once you open up the wings, they do stay open quite nicely. So that's good. The only part is that, you know, they fold, but I mean they, they spread. And that stays at least, so that's good. All right. We painstakingly found the placement of these things and safety pinned them on, and I am going to undo it. Now that we know where they go, it'll be okay. We are totally allowed to do this. I'm like asking myself permission. Okay. Do, 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 do. Safety pins are the bomb. We're gonna take these wings. We're gonna set our lovely little butterfly aside. You can move here and you can fall over. Excellent, we're all on the same page. Just like that. Okay, so wings, upside down, and then these little seams are what I'm going to open up and iron flat. This felt, I believe, is synthetic. It's the really cheap stuff from Hobby Lobby. So I'm assuming it's synthetic and I'm starting with a lower temperature on the iron because of that. If it doesn't do anything, like if it doesn't iron at all, then I'll turn it up. So spread this out. 
open the seam. Double check we're actually on synthetic. We are okay. We really nailed it with these quilted panel wings, you guys. Like there is just not any excess material underneath on the seam. So I did not need to go in and trim anything at all, which was nice. There we go, okay. It's always easier once you have it established. I guess that's like anything else, right? Oh yeah, that's helping, okay. Yeah, cool. Do this middle one. And I'm actually going to repeat the previous one, because they're so close together, the iron is going to end up going over both of these at the same time anyway. I know this is really tricky for you to see here, but um, as I go over this second seam, the rest of the iron is still on the first one. And I wanna make sure I don't undo the uh, pressing that I just did. So I'm reopening this other seam as I go along the second. I'm also kind of curious, gotta be honest, if it will reheat the hot glue pieces that we put on there. So far, so good, no trouble, but you never know. All right, for this guy, I already did you. I'm gonna flip it around instead. And really, really tiny seam. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay. That's good. That was the idea, right? Name of the game was minimize bulk because these things all have to sit inside of each other. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to use my clear cutting ruler, set this over here. up out of the way and I am going to place this over it so that the seams stay open until they fully cool. Perfect. Slide this up and I'm going to go grab that box of crayons to add some weight. Other wing. It's really hot in here. Okay. You know what? The fridge is on anyway, and that's probably louder because I am just not that fancy. I don't I don't know. Maybe. Never say never, but I don't think I'll ever be one of those people that's so fancy that they I'm gonna unplug my fridge to record a video. <laughs> Maybe. Never say never. It just seems so silly. But my point was, I'm totally gonna go turn on the AC. <laughs> oh. I'm a hypocrite. I turn off the AC for a video, but not unplug the fridge. Like, what's the difference? Ha ha. Joke's on me. Teeny tiny little seam. Opening up that second one again. Our first one, I mean. This first one over here before I do the next one. There we go. Flip it around so I don't spend too much time on the hot glue pieces. Set that down, open it up. And do this third piece. Okay. 
Hannah's gonna disappear. Uh, getting sleepy. Awesome. Cool. Sweet dreams over there. We'll catch you next time, Hannah. box now and move on to the top portions this is riveting stuff you guys ironing felt butterfly wings in a sundress riveting <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are here though this is even more fun when we all get to hang out and do it together it's awesome Stay open. I know this works with wovens and chiffon and, you know, other materials like that, but I've actually never used this um, ironing seams open method with felt before. So I'm really curious to see if it makes a difference or not. You know, we'll find out together. This one is really squiggly, this particular seam, because when it's laying flat, it's actually curved. And so it's kind of tough to get this one to all lay flat at the same time. That's good, that'll work. Okay. Are you cooled? You're totally cool. You're so cool. Okay. Then you can take a place instead. Your turn. Open you up here. You gotta stay put. This isn't gonna work if you close up on me. So you're just gonna have to cool up around. There we go. It's working. Do you see this? I mean, <laughs> don't press your luck. Get it? Ha ha. No. Um. <laughs> that just happened. I don't usually catch those so quickly. Okay, but it is staying open much better. So I think it made a difference. And then when we stitch it in place, we can stitch it on a curve so that it really wants to stay open. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the only one who thinks those are funny. Oh, puns and wordplay. It gets me every time. I can't help it. I can be trying so hard to be serious and then somebody just like does a play on words and I lose it. I think it's so funny. <laughs> I'm such a dork. Okay. <laughs> wordplay. It'd be funny if we scolded each other for that. Like, don't play with your food. Don't play with your words. <laughs> I love playing with my food, it's silly. We're, we're, we're adults here, it's cool. We can be ridiculous. The inner child is alive and well with this one, but not as alive and well as the nerd. Okay, that's not even true. Goodness, I am rambling. This happens, this happens every time when I'm doing something that's a little repetitive and slow, I either like, go mellow into a, like a meditation sort of state, which is not as common. Or I do this, I babble. I'm a babbler. I babble when I'm alone too, just for the record. I don't know why I felt the need to confess that, but it's like, that's part of why I decided to start doing these live streams and videos and things because I love sharing the, just the stuff I make and the ideas and hearing how other people are figuring things out and can you work with me? You gotta stay open. You have to stay open when the iron goes over. You gotta stop closing. I know you're in a stubborn mood. Just work with me. Good grief. Okay, tell you what. You get your own press and then we'll just leave you out of it. There. What was I saying? I talked to myself. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> 
<laughs> what more do you need to know? Okay, yeah, I talk to myself and it's fun to share these things with other people. I don't just want to keep them to myself. And so live streaming is a way to just, you know, if you're into it, you're into it. Come hang out. We can make stuff together. Yeah, that one's looking good. Okay, so then you, ta-da, can come on out here. And you can come on in here. Which I'm going to turn you around so that we get more bang for our buck with a box of crayons. Yes. That's looking good. Okay. Did anything else need to be ironed before I unplug this sucker? Not that it takes very long to heat up anyway, but I think we're good. It was just the wings. And then we're going to do everything else and then see if we need to come back over them again. And that was it. Pretty sure. What's the worst that could happen? We plug it back in, right? Okay. Calling that good. I'm going to set you up here out of the way. And definitely coiling the cord so that I don't trip on it and have a hot iron fall on my foot. That's a fun mix. Okay. You guys are upside down, aren't you? Yes, you are. Cool. All right. Stitching on butterfly wings. Well, embroidery thread. One thing I did not pull out. Okay. More supplies. More thread. And embroidery thread. Let's see what color we want to use for you. Good medium purple is probably good. Here's an option. Oh, helps if you can see it, huh? Um, or we can go tealy, which would probably blend in better with the body because it's the darker color, but it still coordinates to the wings. But honestly, I'm kind of liking the purple just because. I mean, we could always go yellow accent like, look, we stitched it. Be obnoxious. <laughs> no, let's not do that. Okay. Definitely between these two. And then once you put it on the butterfly, what do you think, guys? I'm leaning purple over here, but I really don't have a rhyme or reason for it. The blue is probably a better idea. I don't know. Deliberation! Hmm. I want to I wanna do purple, I think. I think, I think. I'm gonna put these safety pins away while I'm thinking on it. I'll give you a minute to chime in if you have an opinion. Welcome back, Bernie. Thanks. We are deciding whether to stitch on the wings with teal or purple. Because it's so important. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm just gonna do purple because I feel like it, unless you guys have an opinion and I'm totally open to it. Black and blanket stitch right around the wings too. Oh yeah. Honestly, my blanket stitch is not great. Like really. It sounds like a good idea in theory, but I need to work on that stitch. <laughs> See if the camera will focus in on the um, the legs. 
forgot to trim this one. I just tripped over my sewing machine. Sorry, McKenna. You can see these little nubbly bits are not the most impressive work. I really need to embroider more, which I would love to do. I have so many ideas, but it is a very meticulous, time-consuming, like repetitive motion with hands. And like most crafters, I'm on the verge of double carpal tunnel all the time. So, you know, remember to do your happy hands poses, everybody definitely makes a difference. I do this all the time, <laughs> especially while I'm driving is usually when I remember every time I'm at a stop, a stop light, stop sign, stop light, not a stop sign really, but just like stretching those muscles. Mm, a few others, but for whatever reason, those are the three that always come to mind. Gotta take care of those hands. Okay. Black and blanket stitch. Even if it's just like, um, oh, help me out, Miki. I know you do a lot more embroidery than I do for sure. The one where you just like around, 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 is that a whip stitch? Right, I think. Granny, you had your dominant carpal oh, operated on six months ago. Oh my goodness. Best thing you ever did, huh? How, like on the tendons and everything to help relieve that that tension and like the crunchiness. That's awesome that they can do that. Oh my goodness, I am so glad that really helped you. Wow. Okay. Did the pen go right here? Whip stitch. Oh, bringing us too. Okay, so that's a whip stitch. Good to know. I can do that. I can place those pretty evenly. Um, oh, I was asking about um, embroidery stitches, and the name of the one that just like goes around and around and. In a circle and Bernie chimed in whip stitch so we figured it out. <laughs> what time is it where you are Mikio? Let's see if I can get you guys a little closer view here. Hopefully and then if I prop up the camera body. Hold on a second, because I want to see if I can get you a better view of this while I'm stitching. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. I'm going to get you a fresh little tripod here. It's not a tripod. It's it's a book on a box. <laughs> it's how I roll. We just try things and figure it out. It's good. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Cool. And then you guys can see a little better just where I'm placing these things. Okay. Three seventeen. So it's the same time as right right here. It's after eleven in the UK. Yeah, you guys are over there. Couldn't couldn't hold a pen or a fork. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine. I would go crazy without the use of my hands. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that's better now. Man. Okay. These wings do naturally want to flop down. So 
I think I'm going to stitch them on like reversed so that they can flop out and they're still gonna fall down a little bit, but then it'll like kind of help. Come on, help me out. There we go. Kind of help to like keep them up and that'll help hide it anyway. So I need to figure out, again, I know we pinned this before. <laughs> Butterfly wings seem to be attached very much up and central because when they're open, it already creates that complete picture. Like the, the butterfly body is almost hidden sometimes underneath. So I'm kind of guessing like right up there. You think like that. I think so. Yeah, there's a little antenna. Antenna. Okay. So once again, just to make sure this is straight and where did it go? This guy, center line, and I'm going to mark it up a lot. Chocolate comes right out and I don't want it to disappear too quickly. So there's our line. Oh, I can see little marks, like teeny tiny little holes, but it's still showing where some of the safety pins were. It's kind of cool because then we can remember where they were and they correlate to the teeny tiny little holes that are on these guys. All right. So just like that. And that is actually exactly the length of where these guys fall. So over this way, over that way. And I am going to do the bottom portion of the wing first so that it will not be in the way. Like if I did the top wing first and then I had to reach past it to get to the bottom ones, that would be more cumbersome than if I start with the bottom first. Start first, yeah, that's redundant. Okay, cool. So I need a, a, need a needle. I need a needle. Alliteration. And we will get going. These are always the trickiest to find. I might have one already threaded that I'm going to have to just commandeer. I need it to be thick enough to give me room for all six strands, preferably, hopefully, but also be short because I don't want it to be too big on the inside when I'm trying to pass it back through. Here we go. That's a good one. That's not too long. Using one of these guys. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just big enough for six strands, but not too long. And I am using just regular em embroidery needles because it doesn't need to be sharp for felt. Like you can see the tip of that, like, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Okay, we got our needle. And then I'm going purple, just because. That's awesome. <laughs> that sounds so cozy. Let's cuddle up in bed. Oh man. I finally managed to catch um, part of Yvonne's latest live stream, Yvonne Williams. I know you guys are totally in on her ma magic. Anybody else who watches this after the fact, you got to go check her out. I am totally plugging her. <laughs> I should probably let her know I'm plugging her, actually, um, just so that she's aware. But I don't think she'd mind. Okay, loading up more than I need again because threading needles is not the most exciting thing in the world. Just saying using the thread in the needle is. Okay. So 
So this line is centered. It is exactly the length that we need. Just checked it. So I am going to line it up just past the end and place that. I need it to come from the inside first so that I can tie hmm, this first stitch. Interesting. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to place the safety pin one more time. That feels strangely akin to never say never. And I'm just going to place it right here where we need that first stitch. And then I'm going to roll this down, flatten these antennae for just a minute, and let some of this excess come out so it's not so stuffy in there. Where'd you go? Get back here. Okay. So I can get to this. Roll down, roll down, roll down until I can see right there, that's where the safety pin is showing up on the other side. So then I can place my first stitch from the inside right there. And tie my little knot. I'm gonna turn so that you can see a little better right there. And the other way, good square knot. I only need one knot. Don't get excited now, let go. Thank you. Just one. Tight, but not too tight because I don't want to pull any extra thread and bunch the felt yet. And then I'm going to pass this through to the other side. Make sure I'm not going through the roll here. And pull everything through perfect and then I can roll this back up and not have to worry about that tail later remove my safety pin because now I'll have a mark of where that ends for the next one auction tomorrow oh thanks for taking a break with me that's awesome it, okay, so the auction starts tomorrow. I remember, um, I don't remember the date, like the number of the day, but I remember Sunday, right? I think. We'll just let people know here too. I don't mind at all. Okay. never really stitched on just the edge of something that's meant to be flopping about before. So this will be interesting. I think a, a few, maybe, uh, a couple extra just stabilizing stitches at the end, and then I'm going to whip stitch through the rest of it. So yeah. Okay, that's why I remember Sunday. So auction starts tomorrow, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, ends on Sunday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Cool. What kinds of things are you auctioning? I know the proceeds and everything are going to um, so your program, nonprofit, um, for older dogs and making sure they have a good home and everything, right? See you, Jessica. Thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you next time. Love you. Bye, Elliot. <laughs> whip it, whip it, whip it, just stitch, whip it, whip it, good.
Okay, right here where I get to a seam. To help prevent these from coming apart, hopefully this focuses for you guys soon. Um, goodness, is it a lighting thing? It is completely blared out for you. Wow. I am not sure why it is so bright there. Okay, well, point is, um, these seams where the pieces connect, I want to go through the two pieces at the back and I'm going to whip stitch those together before I continue whip stitching across this one to make sure that they don't start splitting up the middle. These ends were back stitched. And at first these were as well, but then I trimmed off the excess. And so that back stitch has been lost now. And I'm gonna recreate it with a whip stitch as, as I pass by. So back through here again. And then carry on. And this whole time I have my hand inside. So I'm pinching the place where I'm stitching to make sure that I don't stitch through the uh, the uh, chrysalis, the cocoon, or anything while I'm at it. Okay. Boy, that air conditioner is making a huge difference. Oh my goodness. It gets hot in the afternoon here, I tell you what. Haven't had Cool Whip in a really long time. We used to have a bunch of it stocked up in the freezer for like special occasions and potlucks and whatnot. It's always just sitting there taunting us. <laughs> cool Whip taunting you, that's intense. Okay, but it was, it was just stocked up there, just, you know, hanging out. All right, and then I'm going to start to curve it in a little bit, right? Do you want to do that? I think I'll do that. And this guy needs a little extra stitch over here because it is starting to come apart. You can see right there. So I might go over that again with the sewing machine when we go in and put in the elastic. Oh. Thread is getting all skew on for some. Okay, there we go. So starting to curve this line just a little bit. So it's like curved a little to help that wing stay open and sit nicely beneath the upper portion of the wing. I need to shorten my tail again. It's starting to get stuck in there. Almost done with this piece. Coming up for that whip stitch connection. Stand you up, pull it through, shorten the tail, and a couple more here. Stabilize the end of this guy, and then we'll be good. Okay, so for the end of this, I am going to Oh, you did not place properly. Get in there. I'm not going to hold it down if you want on that corner. Okay. So you can see that up close for a minute. Let's maybe give it a shadow to help focus. There we go. That's better. 
So it's just whip stitched right on straight across. Roughly an eighth of an inch each. Right up, and then I am going to knot through an existing stitch. A couple times because these ones do come undone a little more often than the square knots for me, unless I double them up and then they're good. And feed this straight down inside. Oh, don't lose it in there so I can pull it out this way. And I am not going to trim it. I was about to, and then I realized I'm just going to stitch on another one. But do I want to? Hmm. I kind of want to get both of the bottom portions finished before, before I do the top bits. And then these will be overlapped. Yeah, I do. I want to come back down and do the bottom one so that I'm not dealing with these big ones in the way up front. So what I'm going to do then is I'm, I'm still going to use the same needle because I'm liking this needle. But I am going to just take it off this thread and leave the thread there for myself. In which case I'll pull it up instead so that it does not get tangled with the rest of my work as I'm pulling things through there. So pull it up again instead. Remove it from the needle. So I've just got it here floating. And then I'm going to rethread some fresh embroidery floss to stitch up the other side. And I can come back and thread this when I'm ready to do that top portion. It looks like it'll be exactly the right amount of thread too. Like not too short, not so much excess. Really good in between there. Threading, threading, threading. As soon as these wings are on, it's going to be time to break out the sewing machine. And then it gets serious. <laughs> All right. Now, same deal again. Rolling this down. This time I don't need to place a safety pin because I can see my stitches on the inside. And I am just going to place another starter right there, right on the inside. Tie my little knot. I'm kind of glad I went with the purple now because even if it doesn't really blend in super well with the butterfly body, it doesn't blend in so you can see it, which is kind of nice for a change. Okay. Pull it right back out and we are ready to go. Rolling over. This is one of the most wild complex things I've ever made to tell you what and I've made a lot of wild, complex things. Most of them have been given away, like gifts to friends or things that they needed to solve a problem or, you know, just random things that come up all the time. So I don't have a whole lot of them to show, but it'll be nice to start this kind of portfolio and have an idea of what I've done in the past. So I'm lining up these wings right here. And basically stitching right in that same place, except that it's going to curve away the other way. So when they're opened, it'll just have that little bit there. 
and then the top wings are going to overlap a bit into that section and they will open up the other way again to help create the opening shape of the wings, even though that isn't necessarily anatomically accurate per se. So here we go. Down through the swing. Oh, gotta get in there again, make sure I don't stitch through. Oh, yep, I was definitely gonna stitch all the way down through that caterpillar. Okay, glad I remembered. And I am accidentally threading this through so that it's not, and I don't want that. So I need to go back through here to separate those two and then pull it. I know I've said this before, but it is definitely one of those things that comes up again and again, like one of the best things I've learned in crafting and making in general is just the fact that it's okay to trust your eyes. Like whatever you see, that's what's going on. If it looks like it's too far apart, it's too far apart. If it's turning into a knot, it's gonna be a knot. I keep thinking whip stitch every time I do this. That's why I'm singing with that. Cool whip. This is like put a stitch through, it's like whip stitch. Whip stitch. And just like narrate every single individual stitch. Does anybody else do that in your head? Like you're just, you're working and in your head, you involuntarily narrate every step of what you do. Is it just me? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> just get you over. This one too, overlapping the wing on a side where I don't want it. So I'm going to pop that out and pull it a little tighter because if it were to be popped over at a later point, that little extra thread would eventually loosen up the whole line of stitches. I don't want that. I think I might back you guys up a little bit again because it's so easy to go off camera if I'm focusing on the stitch and not paying attention for a second. Wow. Holy tangle, Miss Frizzle. Okay. And then at this point, it starts to curve. Yep, okay. Get a little bit of a curve right there. And I need to whip stitch you two together. And, and then come back on one. And make sure I'm actually curving this out. Okay, good. Stitch. Now we've got sound effects. It's escalating. Almost done with this bit. And then we can go straight into the top portion. We'll just stay on this side for that top wing. And continue up this side before switching to the other again to finish up over there. So I'm gonna tie this knot. Get in there. I want the stitch, not just the felt, thank you. Open that back up, moving, and 
Okay. One. Tail's getting long again. And two. I mean, it isn't. <laughs> it's getting shorter with, as the thread gets shorter, but I don't know. I always think of it as getting longer when it starts encroaching on the actual stitching thread, if that makes any sense. Okay, and then I want to go underneath, but before I do that, I need to know where I want the needle to come back up. So, if I come in here, we want them overlapped, but not too much because I don't want to lose that bit of purple there. And I kind of want to like bunch these just a little bit, not a lot, but a little to help them create that kind of shell shape because it will help them to stand up and to stay open. Like this is much better than when it's just strictly flat. It doesn't stay up at all. So how am I gonna do that? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, so I know I don't want that too far back, but these are going to be very much in the center again. So it's gonna go there, line it up, put it through. And I'm gonna go through the body and the wing, double check I don't have anything else coming with it. Pull my thread and get everything lined up so that there isn't any tension with the thread between these two, but I'm not gonna bother cutting it. And just make sure that's nice, even pull it a little looser for that, but then get this through here and come in again. And I'm gonna tie this in a knot. There we go. How did you happen? I've got a loop knot going on here. Is it? No, it's not because of the tail. I must have accidentally put my needle through the thread instead of just through the stitch. All right. That's double knotted too now. Okay, cool. And then we carry on. So if I want this bunched a little bit, then I guess place the stitches further apart on the body, but closer together on the wing. Maybe, no, the opposite. The complete opposite of what I just said. Just keep them really close on the body, but further apart on the wing, and then that will bring it in closer. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. We do math. We do geometry. It's good stuff. So close on the body, further apart on the wing, and let that cinch in. Yes, okay, that is working. Excellent. I'm moving to it again. Let's see. Use a little, oh, it's so tiny, hold on. Use a little running stitch and use it to gather the wing a little. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, too late. I guess you didn't see my content. I'm so sorry. I'm like so absorbed figuring out how to do this. Oh my goodness. That really would work. Yeah, I'm doing it the hard way, aren't I? That's that's a pretty common thing for me. Oh man, I'm sorry, Birdie. That is definitely a good idea. I do that with skirts and so on. 
Haven't done it with wings like this before. Have I mentioned I haven't done this before like a hundred times yet? Have we hit the hundred mark? <laughs> oh, hilarious. Okay. <laughs> if it works, it works. I guess that's probably how different people came up with all of these types of stitches in the first place, right? Just trying things and if it works, it works. I swear, I do not do things the hard way on purpose. I just want to make sure they work. And sometimes the out of the boxness is unwitting <laughs> and not really on purpose. It's kind of silly. Okay, here's another one that's starting to come apart. So. I am whip stitching up the wing a little bit more on this one than some of the others. Turn my hands against so you can see. Yeah. So that'll be a little cross stitch, whip stitch kind of a thing. Josh, that looks kind of cool. Kind of, not a lot, but kind of. Okay. And almost done with this wing. Oh, this is exciting. Once they're on, they're on. I mean, that'll be it. Like, those are the wings. Voila. Voila. And up on the side. Shorten the tail again. And tie it off. My loop is twisted, so I've got to be real careful with this one, too. There we go. Oh, that one looks like a cute little French knot. I love it when that happens. One of these days, I will get around to embroidery and practicing and getting those stitches really honed in and so on. So on, haha. <laughs> um, I just haven't yet. So many different interests and hobbies and so on. And so on. You know, that's probably the name of someone's clever blog. It's just too good not to be snatched up by now. <laughs> and so on and so on. It's getting so good. Look at this. <laughs> okay. So cute. I'm going to do overlap nicely, just that little bit, because they're supposed to be like that. And this one. Cool. <laughs> um, what, where did I put the, okay, Whew. Okay, trim that down and keep my little straggler ends in here, my insane collection of trimmed ends. Believe it or not, I actually do come back through that obnoxious pile and use those bits again. <laughs> The bits that are too short to use again, I keep in a different thing. And those ones I put out for the birds to put in their nests and get colorful nests all around. It's cool. I've seen this concept in um, probably just Pinterest, maybe other places too, but like putting out your, your scraps and trimmings of thread for birds to use in their nests. And I've put the scraps out, but I haven't personally seen them in a nest yet and when I do I will probably flip out and be so excited <laughs> it's gonna be good okay this whip stitch is really showing a lot on the butterfly body up here and butterflies are kind of fuzzy in places and it almost makes me want to go in and add some butterfly fuzz like like knot stitches and do a bunch of them like Berber looped things and then trim it up. But um, we'll see if we get to that today or not, but we are definitely finishing this. Okay. Cause I don't have, um, I normally have class Wednesday nights and tonight I do not. So we can go a little bit later than usual, a little, not a whole lot. 
So I do still need to, to pick up my son, but enough that we can finish this up. Very exciting. Okay, I am going to move the camera again and get you guys out of this stuffy little angle because I know you've seen three of these. You know how this is going. It's good. So we are going to sit you up again. Ah, sorry, guys. I'll just drop you first. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> All right. How's that? That's where we were before. And then I can just angle you down right here. Hi. <laughs> okay. So back it up here. And I can even just bring you up and I'll hold it. So oh, I need to trim this again. Because, yep, those ends are all over the place. I haven't embroidered since the 1980s. I used to love it. What kinds of things did you embroider? Like what were your favorite patterns? Like cross stitch or like the 3D stuff or just kind of overlapping long stitches? Like it's one of the things I love about embroidery. There are so many different kinds, different styles, color, like black work, white work, like doing something all in one range of a single color. Like, have you seen, I'm sure you have, but um, like blue china transfer wear, but done as embroidery. So you have maybe three, probably three different shades of the same blue and um, everything is stitched in those blues and it just looks amazing. Blue transfer wear china is just a gorgeous pattern in general. This thread is not happy with me, you guys. It just wants to fray like mad. Come on. There. Okay. So. Is you know, right here, start there. We're gonna come up under. That's one downfall of this camera angle. Now you can't see what I'm doing again. We'll figure it out. Here again. So I'm trying to line this up so that I know when I flip it back the other way, it'll lay in the same position. And it's really tricky because I actually need the stitch to go through this way first. So I'm trying to line this up. We'll just do our best. It's all we can do. Right there, I want it right there, so. Let's see. Oh my goodness, tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Ha ha, that'll do, okay right here and same as before loosen it up make sure that isn't going to be pulling too much over there and come inside here loop through and i'm going to tack the knots after i shorten my thread Through. 
I'm so excited to see these things. Oh my goodness. This way, that way. Let me know this way now. Okay. This is the last one. Let's see. If you had done the stitches parallel to the edge of the wings rather than perpendicular to it, you wouldn't get any stitches showing on. The body of the caterpillar like a mattress stitch kind of a thing like wow oh, that's true I got stuck on whip stitch because it was in my head it's all looking funny that is so true live and learn This is why I'm so glad you guys are here. <laughs> Hordes of advice. I'm just making things up as I go. I'm so glad you find it entertaining enough to come and come and chill with me. It'll just keep getting better. Okay. Through here. Ooh. This one is coming apart a lot. Looks fine as it is, but something to think about if you make another one. Yeah, definitely something to think about. And you know, I think I probably will. I don't know that I'll make another one soon. I definitely have some things coming up on my roster. Um, you know, priorities that suddenly rise to the top and then other things hit pause for a minute. But when those are all finished again, I, I think I might just revisit this and do another one. See if I can put together a tutorial for how to get this solved together. Okay, these two have really come apart. So I am going to whip stitch the bottom and that, that um, hollow seam has come up high enough that I'm probably going to go back in with the sewing machine instead of just whip stitching it, especially knowing how much a whip stitch can show with a flat edge kind of piece coming together like that. So, yeah, for sure. And seven years ago. Okay, something funny is going on here. What? You go together and then you come through and that's where you stay. Good, good. Okay, checking in on this. The first one I gathered much more apparently. The second one starts, oh, here we go. Starts in the same place, but as they go up, this is much wider. So I am going to pull this out because that difference is definitely obvious. So pulling this one out. That is a huge difference. You know, I think I know what it is though. About well, not quite. I, I definitely need to cinch that more, but about the distance that this is too high. Here, I'm off camera again. About the, the distance that this is off from the first wing, there's also a big difference between these pieces. Do you see that bottom panel is almost twice as long on this side? So I think I need to trim that wing. That is, oh man, okay. Let's see if I can get this. It really doesn't want to come out easily. Which means it's probably tugging at the felt under there, which is not good. 
as long as it comes, okay, no, it's going now. As long as it comes out readily, I'll keep doing it this way. If it starts giving me a hard time, I'm just gonna trim it and pull instead because I don't wanna put too many big holes in the felt. <sighs> Seam ripping, time old tradition. What is it, age old tradition? You are in a funny place. Where do you come out? There we go. Good. Still coming along okay? Okay, good. I really don't want to rip the belt. So far, so good. Almost there. Oh, but I did tie a knot at the beginning, so I'm gonna have to trim that stitch anyway. I hope we still have this good embroidery floss for other things. I'll probably just split it up for smaller stitch work. It's kind of funny, like I say I haven't done much embroidery and I really haven't, but I use embroidery floss and you know miscellaneous hand stitching on lots of other things that I do. Mostly that doesn't have a whole lot to do with embroidery, which I, mainly consider a decorative thing. Like if you aren't creating some kind of decorative border or an illustration of some kind, like it doesn't really seem like embroidery to me. Even if you're using embroidery floss. Okay, all right, our wing is free. So we can trim up that bit that is so much wider than the other side. These guys ended up nicely placed. They aren't exact, like they aren't perfectly lined up, but they look right, like they look okay. And then this guy's good, okay. Whew. Starting over, we got this, we're good, okay. Pull you out, you don't need random threads sticking out there. And this is wild, okay. So the way that this came out, you can see it's like double the length. So I am going to trim that to be more similar. So bring it in at the edge, but then I am immediately going to come back out so that we don't take away a whole lot from the rest of the wing because we still want it to have that big full shape like that. So this is all that I trimmed off, but the widest point over here, and it doesn't look as big on my hand now, but hopefully that will make a difference. Okay. So this original thread here is probably, yeah, that's definitely more than triple. That'll be plenty of thread. So this will be good to just Thread up again and try again. Okay. Get these extra bits out of the way before they get buried and bulky. You know, in terms of revisiting this and making another one, stitching the wings and then placing them on the open, unstitched butterfly body, you could sew it directly to the center of the felt while it's still flat and then stitch 
the body together. As long as you make sure that the wings stay out of it, that should work very well. So if I do it again, I'll have to remember that because that makes a big difference. Getting the wings placed. Okay, so you should come in very well now. But I do want to get that first stitch placed so that it will be invisible. I, want, I have another idea, and now I want to see if that works. So we're going to do this a slightly different way. Instead of hiding the whole tail from inside, I just want to try this now. I am going to place my first stitch, which I can still see sitting right there. I'm going to tie my knot over one way, over the other. And twist that around. So I am going to stitch this tail into the seam instead and just see how that works out. The worst thing that could happen is we could fail again. <laughs> it's the worst that could happen. It could just not work. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Deep breaths, everybody. Go over here. Is this still right? It's right. Okay. Come around. And now I want to make sure that tail is going to be in it. Coming around. Not picking up anything else from inside. Good. Check, check, check. And around here. Okay. We got this. It's fine. And I do need to cinch this as I go along. Okay. It's all a learning curve. Amen to that. All of life, all the time, always. It's the best. I mean, life would be pretty boring without it, so can't complain. I mean, we could. It just makes the ride much less enjoyable, so I'm not going to. <laughs> Screw that. All right up through here, whip stitching panels together. Good. Yeah, this is working really well. That'll tuck that, that little tail very nicely. You can kind of see it right there just hanging out and then I'm making sure I stitch around it each time so it'll disappear by the end of it. Much easier than rolling and placing a stitch and having it stick out the back and which is a nice place for tails to be. They can just hang out there and they're not bugging anybody. But this works too and then I don't have to stuff everything inside so much. Okay, we're still, still in the right place. It's in the right place. Okay, I need to start bunching this more. So, oh, doing it the hard way. Which way was it again? It's Closer together on the body, further apart on the wing, and then that will cinch it. Okay. Here we go. We're already going. I don't know why I always say that. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Pulling that tight and broad. And that. And do, do stitching the U. Hey now. Don't go nodding on me. I didn't ask you to do that. And up through here. All the way over to the side. That bunching works out very nicely. Put 
fold it in. Still looking okay. Still good, still good. You know, I see another discrepancy between the wings now. This purple piece really comes to a point on this one, but it's very much open on the other side. So that is another difference between them. That is contributing to the way these are being placed, I mean. They come out a little differently. Okay, so close together on the body. I keep having to remind myself, this is definitely the hard way. Do it the other way, guys. If you're watching this later, like <laughs> when we're done being live and you're watching this trying to make one of these, definitely do your stitches parallel like Bernie suggested and do like a back stitch or a double running stitch or something parallel to the wing and not a whip stitch like I'm doing here. It does technically work, but it's also definitely the hard way and it doesn't look as good. So you know, note to self, note to you. There you go. You'll get it. Okay. Come up through there. Pull that top. I'm gonna loop stitch you two together. And then this is the end of that wing. Through here. Right there, pull it in, pull the bear, put it around. Okay, and we're gonna tie a little knot in here. One and two. Because I just like to be thorough like that. And thorough. And tuck our tail, which we could just put through this whip stitch again the other way, but I'm just going to go straight through. It's easier. At this point, it's easier. There we go. Needle in the book. Ta da! Our delightfully wonky wings. Aren't they cute? Wonky cute. Oh my goodness. They flutter. They totally flutter now. They didn't really flutter before. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay. It's working. You can definitely see the whip stitch. And I'm just going to have to call it on this one. Lesson learned. We'll do a different stitch next time, and this will do. So that's that. Okay. Wings are on. It is time to pull out the sewing machine. And we are stitching elastic and the toggle. And then we can glue the eyes and sew on the proboscis. And then it'll be done. I can't believe it. Okay. I am still working on the ironing mat. That's just gonna get fuzz on all the ironing stuff, huh? What? Oh well. Tuck you in. Set you aside. Set you guys aside, because I need to put the machine there. Anybody else? All right. I have a feeling you're going to redo those stitches on the wings. You know, I think you're right. But <laughs> I won't torture you and do it a third time now. We can finish it and it can be okay. And then I'll fix it and I can show you in a vlog and you can check in and see that later <laughs> when it's all done and I showcase it. So it's fine. It's good. All four of those things I am. I'm totally good. Okay. Sewing machine. Up here. Okay. Big old sturdy machine. Let's see if we can get you guys in here. 
and I've got a big bag of supplies down there. I keep knocking. Okay. Hmm. For sewing, if I angle you down, how do you like that view? Is that working? Move these over here. Right here? Maybe. Made more. Oh, no, 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 Brainy. It's not your fault for suggesting it. Seriously, I can't thank you enough because you're totally right. Um, Miki was just teasing me because she knows it's going to bug me enough to go back and redo it anyway. Even though I keep saying I'm fine with it and I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain, but I am going to go back and redo it. So she's just kind of poking me. <laughs> um, no, it's it's good. Now I know. This is experience right here. This is what experience works looks like. And it still works. Like, it really doesn't matter. We do this for the fun of it anyway. So, you know, if you're not having fun, <laughs> stop doing it. <laughs> okay. Now we are doing the elastic. So I want the elastic to be free floating in the loop. So I'm going to measure how much I need. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to sew it. And then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, but it does matter. <laughs> yeah, you get me. <laughs> oh, this is cracking me up. Okay. <laughs> I gotta this out of the way. All right. Um, make some room. Make some room. Hmm. Whew. Okay. Yeah. Flip this inside out. This is so fun with the wings on now, though. Like it's just so colorful all the time. What am I doing? This needs to be going the other way to make sure. Does it matter? Maybe? Ooh, okay, guess what guys, check this out. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The uh, face of the caterpillar ends up all the way down at the end that gets super scrunched. So when he comes out, he's like, Whoop, coming alive. And guess what? Our hot glue held up. So that's fabulous. You win some, you lose some. We're winning the caterpillar. <laughs> We're winning the whole thing. Let's let's be real. It's a three-way converting butterfly. Caterpillar, cocoon, and butterfly. I've never seen one of these before in my life. So it is a giant win. No matter what stitch we use. All right, I'm, I'm gonna stop. Okay. To do this the right way, I gotta connect these, the cocoon end seam and the butterfly body end seam, or like the cap. But this cocoon piece also needs to be attached to itself. So I need to do that first. And then bring these together. Yeah. So you can kind of see a little bit. When the caterpillar has everybody else stuffed up inside of it, um, the, the, cocoon and the butterfly body are much longer than the caterpillar, which helps when the cocoon is out because the butterfly wings and legs and everything are up here inside of it, creating bulk here. And then the caterpillar creates the bulk everywhere else to keep it even. Um, but when everything is stuffed inside the caterpillar, that's when it's really tricky. Um, I don't want the cocoon to be any smaller than it is, really. Because it just, it looks right to me the way that it is, like here. 
see if we can step back a little bit. This already looks right to me. And this is going to be folded over so it'll have a dark cap from the butterfly to make sure that when the butterfly is facing out, it'll all be dark because the face of the butterfly is right there. And I don't want any light accents distracting from the proboscis and the pretty eyes that we made. So that needs to be folded over this way. And then the cocoon, stand you up, will be tucked in around here, all the way around. This will be closed up. And because the butterfly body is slightly shorter than the cocoon now, it'll really help to bunch those up. So even when the butterfly is fully extended like that, the cocoon is all, you know, scrunchy and bubbly and cocoony. I'm walking through this again, because I'm trying to catch if there's anything I'm missing before I move forward and stitch it closed on us. If there's anything I'm missing that needs to go from the inside, I think we're good. The worst thing that could happen is we could fail harder. So let's do it. Okay. Tilt you back down here. I wish the light on this thing had a separate switch sometimes because I know that that different light temperature doesn't show up on the camera very well for you guys. Um, human eyes adjust very well. So I can see all of these things. It looks a little yellow to me, but in terms of brightness and so on, it's just like no big deal. But um, yeah, ooh, check this out. Here's the last time we'll get to see this. <laughs> Everything completely inside out. Wow. I'm just turning this inside out so I can stitch these guys here. So I'm gonna attach part of the back side of the cocoon to the rest of the caterpillar to make sure that that doesn't get um, enclosed on itself. I want the caterpillar to keep that full circumference. So instead of bringing these straight together and having that little gap that will close it, I know it's tough to tell which gap I'm talking about right here, but this one, um, I'm going to attach the cocoon to that first before I stitch up after that. So we come in here and we were missed and so, we will take that opportunity to go right over here. Where are my scissors? I need to trim that. You are getting in the way. So we're going to deal with that. Where'd you go? Mm, yep, yep, okay. So bring this through. <laughs> Here we go. Hold your breath. All the way until the end. <laughs> oh, man. This is funny. Okay. Stitching this on. Petal. Come hither. Okay. <laughs> That bit, and then I need to reposition this again. I should probably trim that because the bottom won't like it if I just let that go free range. Okay, trim you. And now line this up to bring it to center. I'm gonna have to do this in three parts here. Just like bringing this side in, the other side in, and then going down that seam. So this part is gonna take just a minute here, guys. And then we can get right to the elastic. Here, pedal. Okay, 
I have a totally different song in my head now. What is that one? It was Hey Nanny Nanny. Oh my goodness sake, I have Ren Fair in my head. It's been a while. That's funny, okay. Ren Fair. I don't even remember which song that's from, but I know it's Hey Nanny Nanny. Do 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 and change the key. Do 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 do. Could go on forever. Come on up. Oh yeah. Here. This looks so funny. Look at this. Look at this madness. This is all going on at the same time, but you only see one at a time. Isn't that crazy? Look at those badass whip stitches. Am I allowed to say that on YouTube? I'm going to have to look that up. Probably. People are crazy on YouTube. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of crazy stuff out there. Okay. This overlaps. I mean, I do not have a perfectly scientific engineering reason for why that came together, but it did. And so I'm going to stitch the end of this, trim that, and then match it up with the uh, butterfly bit and just not worry about it. For real. For real this time. <laughs> this is not like the whip stitch. I am totally cool with this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, dropping the foot, even though I can't tell because there are like six layers of felt in there. And, yeah, six layers of felt, okay. <sighs> Manual back stitch is fine, there we go. We got this. Double check where that end is. And we're good. This is getting exciting. Put this here. Again, look at this teeny tiny little piece that makes such a big difference. Sewing is weird. Okay. Trim you. And now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tuck. Move back in there because how do we do this? How do we do this? Hmm. The butterfly needs to overlap the cocoon, but the elastic needs to go inside of it. So, okay, I'll start with this. I am going to pull this through. Get it facing the right way again. We can work with this. This kind of looks like a dinosaur, these like scallopy bits in green until you see the face. I mean, I'm sure there were plenty of caterpillars in dinosaur times because they totally had giant moths and so on. I don't know that for a fact one way or the other, but I am thoroughly convinced that it's true. I'll look it up later, you should too. <laughs> don't quote me on that. <laughs> Why wouldn't they have giant moths? Like, <laughs> it's dinosaur times. Oh, I should not say these things. Misinformation is running rampant enough as it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are we gonna do with you? What are we gonna do with you? Butterfly needs to overlap the other side. Okay, wings. Yo, you gotta get down in there. Get down. Oh, God, do this. Get down. Stay out of the way because we don't want to stitch you up when we get this all sorted out. Here's what we need to do. We're going to turn this, flip it inside out to the widest point of transition, right? So this is the thickest part that the elastic is going to have to get over. And then I am going to take the elastic and wrap it around 
and I'm going to stretch it. I'm not just going to let it be lax. I'm going to stretch it all the way around until it matches so I know that will fit. Pinch that to mark it, let it go. And I'm gonna give it just a little more, not a lot, but a little, a little more than that for seam allowance, tiny bit, but also the other part of the little bit, I'm getting so technical about this silly thing, but I, I gave it almost an extra inch, not quite, scant inch, it's probably like seven eighths. Um, because we don't want it fully, fully, fully extended to get through there because that's going to make the transition just as difficult. But this much we can handle. So, coming that up, here we go. I am going to stitch these two together. It's getting so close, oh my goodness. I am switching to zigzag stitch four wide, definitely putting the stitch count up, like way up, like almost like a buttonhole. Not quite, there's, there's no call for that sort of obnoxious stitchery here, but instead of sewing a box, like a lot of times when you stitch elastic together, you make a box with an X through it or something to that effect, but this is so tiny, I'm not gonna bother. I am just going to do a zigzag stitch and line up my elastic properly. Get back here. Okay. Here we go. Pull this other part out of the way. I know you can't really see it, but this, oh, hey, come here. Come here. This part, I don't want that too close to the rest of it because I will probably accidentally stitch it if I leave it. So, pulling that out of the way, pinning it, holding thread and starting. And that we'll do nicely. And just to be thorough, give it a good tug, just to check. Oh yeah, that's good, that'll hold, okay. Double check again and again and again and again, oh my God. That is a really nice, tension but it still has plenty of room and every time I let go every time I let go of it it still cinches it in even at the widest point so that'll definitely make a difference in closing up that wide end and when it has the felt around it this will appear even smaller because of the bulk of the felt that it's holding and it'll be nice and dark in there so the illusion of the butterfly face will come together Okay, popping that guy right back down, out of the way. We don't need that for a minute. And I want, I know I want the brown to overlap it, but I also kind of want the, the elastic free floating in between the two. So I'm trying to figure out, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this guy up and just get this placed for a second. Let's see if I can get this a little closer to you guys. And see how much of an overlap we need. I'm not gonna worry about folding under the edge of the seam because felt is not going to fray or, you know, look terrible or anything. It'll just add a little extra flair to the style of the cocoon, if anything. So I think about half an inch should do it. So I'm gonna take this elastic off, set it aside for a minute. And starting at the back seam of the cocoon, I am going to stitch directly onto this at the back, which is the bottom of the butterfly as well. They are lining up right here. And I'll go straight around leaving a half inch of the brown, the darker brown. Sorry, I'm going off camera like crazy. Um, and then place the elastic, fold this over and stitch it again. And that way the elastic can't slip down under 
good grief. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Under the brown right here. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So we're removing the plate. Does that even fit? It doesn't really fit, but it's still easier without the plate. Okay. I'm not going to force that. I don't want to stretch the felt that much. And I will also continuously be checking that I'm not stitching any of that into the ring. Isn't that a great little like cave of magic in there? The rainbow really brings it together. Rainbows bring everything together. I love rainbows. Oh my goodness, I love rainbows. Everyone who knows me knows I am absolutely crazy about rainbows. <laughs> crazy about rainbows. Okay. Pulling this in here. And just stitching right along the edge. Antenna. Sorry, you can come out to play later. Get out of the way. Okay. Right there. Here we go. Um, straight stitch, turn down the stitch count. Excellent. I guess we don't need to back stitch. But I'm going to anyway. You know I am. Okay. Carry on, carry on. And needle through so we don't skid it around. Reposition, do a little more. Gosh, lots of repositioning with this. It doesn't even fit around the arm, so really got to turn it around a lot. I'm also positioning again and again to make sure that I still have that roughly half inch, pretty generous half inch, honestly, I should double check that. Yeah, we're doing like three quarters of an inch on that. I know it's a small difference, big picture, but big picture, it makes a big difference. <laughs> That did not make any sense at all. Love it. Still in there, you guys. These threads keep distracting me like something is poking out, but it's not, so I'm trimming them. Oh my goodness, we're already halfway. Halfway around the ring. Do, 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 do. Charge. Skitty, skitty. Okay, my seam allowance is getting a little smaller in places, but We'll figure it out. And I'm gonna have to back stitch there because we went off the lighter brown. Come on in here, because we definitely want to connect you, okay? I'm talking to all of these things as if they're alive. <laughs> Okay, there is some overlap. I'm going to flip this thing around to show you again. Or maybe I should just pick up the camera. I don't know. Here, we'll go ahead and do that. Whew, I hope this doesn't make you dizzy. Okay. Uh, turn. Nope. Come here. Right here. Oh my goodness. Camera just like slid right down. Okay. Right here there is some overlap. Like that's the beginning of the seam under there where we started. And I'm going to stitch over it as if that's on purpose and create that fold because it's, you know, cocoonage. But I'm just letting you know, like I'm not bothering to pin this. I'm not lining it up. I'm not, you know, any of that. It's just going around roughly the same circumference and then whatever extra I have, if it were the butterfly, same deal. And I'm just gonna stitch straight over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no class tonight. We're okay. I always forget the alarms go off even if your phone is silent. 
I'm definitely one of those people who has to set alarms even for things that I really want to do. I still have to set an alarm to remind me, oh, that's happening now. Like, <laughs> I would lose my head if I didn't write it all down. It's crazy. <laughs> that's not how that saying goes. It's like I would lose my head if it wasn't attached to my body, right? But when I say my head, I actually think of that in my own mind, like lose my head, like lose the information stored in it because clearly that's the more important part. I know that's heavily implied when people refer to the brain and so on, but it's me. I take everything very literally. Okay. So we're all connected in the circle of life. And that's where I backstitched and just let it go totally ski wampus. And that'll probably show on the outside with the butterfly. And that's just one of those things. And then we take our little ring and wet our butterfly Just kidding. and stick it on there <clears throat> and fold it over but I want that elastic <clears throat> excuse me cobwebs in there um yeah fold it over so that it only just barely comes past the elastic to stitch right there. Like so. Haha, <laughs> so there's another one. Which way? There we go. Like that. So really the whole casing of the elastic is made from the darker brown, but stitching the lighter brown on there first, make sure that it stays up and it's included and it isn't going to fall down. So here we go. Oh my goodness, so close. This is like right behind the machine, of course, but like really finicky. Cause the elastic is like this whole other thing. Like I tug and it tugs back and it's like, Rawr! Tiger floor. Okay, that's a good place to start. Get you right there. And shove you up under the foot. Drop it. Place it and manual back stitch on that because I only have two hands. Okay. It's the plastic. Oh man. I suppose I could have created a casing and then threaded it, but I just really want this placed where it is. And that means a casing that is really small and tight. And I have small safety pins, but it's, it's just not a sure thing whether it's gonna get in there if I'm making a really small casing. I have had those before where I stitch it all up and I think I have enough room and then I can't get the safety pin past a certain point and I end up seam ripping and doing it again and again. So, the lesson learned on that one before the butterfly. I'm gonna continuously push the elastic that way and pull the felt up over it. And do a little at a time again. And with this one, that tiny seam allowance is causing the felt to get stuck up between the teeth of the foot, you know, the prong, and then it like, instead of going underneath, it gets stuck up in the middle. And so I am repositioning that part as well. Make sure we don't have any wings coming up. Still good, still good. And there we go. Just really feels like like finger wrestling. Oh my goodness! You over there, and you over here, and then might have to trim those too. Ah! <laughs> okay. Tap it. Bring it around. 
scoot you up. Fold you over. Do a hokey pokey. Turn your butterfly around. Boy, if I didn't tell you I had a four-year-old, I think you'd probably guess it by now, huh? <laughs> Do the hokey pokey. Mm. Hokey pokey is fun. Oh, my goodness. It's really too bad this doesn't fit around the arm. That would really help. Mm. Get in there. Nope. I don't want you over here. I need you in there. You've got to turn around. I have definitely talked to an, an, an inanimate, inanimate objects like people long before I had a kid though. That's for sure. getting there. It looks like we are about halfway. I'm going to trim these because I keep getting in the way again. Stragglers. This casing you can see though is looking really nice. <laughs> okay. It's coming around. It's good. Okay. Pull you up and over and straighten you out. And come on. Just a little more. going to pull this taut and fold over the whole rest of this thing as best I can at least. Come on. I'm trying not to stitch through the elastic too much too because I know if I stitch it in place too many times it won't work properly. So Fold you over and fold you over. All of you here. And all of you there. We've got enough of it in place that I'm hoping to be able to do this last bit. And oh, don't snap the needle. And more of a straight seam here. Around, got about an inch left. Straight through there. Going through seven layers of felt again. There. Yes, ha ha ha, I feel like Frankenstein. Okay, the doctor, not the uh, misnamed monster. The monster is not Frankenstein. Anyway, <clears throat> oh yes, okay. So it's just a little bit, just like that, but it gives it that inward shape instead of splaying way up. Like compared to before, oh, this is getting hot, okay. Compared to before, that is a big difference. Voila. So, here we go. That's the last thing with the sewing machine, right? Because I'm hand stitching the proboscis and hot gluing the eyes. And then that's it, we're done. I'm not ever gonna stop knocking on wood, you guys. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's this guy. 
And, okay, here we go. I'm gonna touch everything now. You ready? I'm a stream. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Get a load of this. Okay. <laughs> Butterfly in the sky. <laughs> it kind of looks like a giant mouth, which is leading me to think. Let me get you a good view of that. Right. This butterfly is going to eat you. But yeah, it's it's leading me to think we should definitely put the proboscis coming from the top. Can you see that? Hey, welcome back, Jessica. Like so. To, you know, kind of help disguise that. Because we can tuck this in like that and then give it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is as good as it's going to get. For it to do the transition from the cocoon to the butterfly, it's just going to have to be this way. So... What do we want to do? Let's see. Where do we want to put it? Definitely on the top, but on the top of where? Ooh, looking forward again to making another one of these. The transition of the cocoon to the butterfly could also be on the top, but you remember how, where does it go? Okay, so the caterpillar is like this long, right? But then the butterfly and the cocoon are this long. So the cocoon is the connection between the two. And so it's a slit on the bottom for the caterpillar into the cocoon. <clears throat> and then instead of a hole at the very end, it could be another slit that is the rest of the distance between the end of the caterpillar and the rest of the cocoon and the butterfly. It would be roughly the same size of a hole too. I think that would also work. That could be a fun way to try it next time. Yeah, so for now, with our gorgeous fluttery little prototype, we have to decide where to put the proboscis, which apparently is spelled with another O. P-R-O-B-O-S-S-C-I-S. -S -S. Writing backward apparently, okay. So we need to place our eyes. Let's see if that'll stick and we'll show you. With the butterfly, I'm thinking more narrow set, like right up there. Ooh, maybe not that narrow. She's a cross eye. Right? You just like kind of squish this all in together. This is cracking me up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the best. Oh my goodness. All these funny things. Concept proven. Execution acceptable. End product. Lovingly needs work. <laughs> this is so great. Okay. Glue gun again, glue gun, glue gun, glue gun. Gotta get you heating up. In the meantime, I'm gonna have to start stitching that proboscis because we have mm, 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops and counting. Gotta get this finished and I'm gonna head out the door. And then, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing Friday. I want to keep this up and keep doing live streams because they are so much fun and I definitely have ideas. I don't mean I don't know what to do, but like which one to do, you know? I have supplies for quite a few, so we'll see. Um, or, was it a pattern? No, no, there's no pattern. It was literally just an idea. I'm like, it would be so, oh, put the needle down. It would be so cool 
if you could have a teaching tool that's a caterpillar that flips into a cocoon, that flips into a butterfly, and then I just started mulling over, well, how would that work? Is that even possible? And this is what I figured out to make it work. So I've never done anything like this before. I've made things out of felt and I've stitched and I've created patterns, but I've never done something. Come here. I've never done something that has this level of complexity and mixing and matching and like fitting so many different functions into one place. This isn't even switched on. Come on. Um, yeah, but there was no pattern. So even the wings, like we just made it up as we went. We like all of us together, like, um, yeah, Hannah and Bernie and and Mikio helped with like the colors and the patterns and like how many dots to place. And it was very much a joint effort, especially on the wings. So proud of these of you guys. <laughs> they look so cool. Yeah, it's just making it up. <laughs> Should have guessed. Yeah. It's like you've known me since birth or something. <laughs> okay, what do you think of these butterfly eyes? They're gonna have to go there. Like, can't put anything here, so it's just gonna go around. And then I think the proboscis, I'll just try to attach it like right to the edge there. And that'll be that. All right, it's as good as it's gonna get, so it's one or the other, probably this. But the eyes, we have a little more say in the eyes, definitely, to still make it work. They can be a little wider set. They can be further down, like right on top of this thing with the proboscis, like a nose basically coming right out from between them, which is kind of weird, like an elephant. Or just slightly higher, slightly wider, slightly. Move back over, only slightly. Like that. Ish. I can't help noticing that this looks like a mouth. In this context, it's like one of those like giant like gulping monsters with like the rows and rows of teeth. Am I thinking like how to train your dragon or maybe Star Wars? I don't know. But like, you know, it kind of looks like a giant mouth like Wah! <laughs> So eyes like this. Mm -hmm. See if this guy's heated up yet. Not quite. I think the eyes fall like that, but the proboscis seems more clear cut to me that it's going to have to go at the top of that gargantuan opening. It's a big butterfly. It's a big, like, busty, curvy butterfly. So she just needs some room, man. It's okay. It's a big butterfly. Gorgeous. Speaking of nonsense, I think I'm getting hungry. <laughs> okay. Took this guy in. You can see the little white bit. I'm checking if it's showing up for you at all. Not really. There we go. This little wire sticking out. Um, when I stitched these cords and folded them over, I had the wire in there already. So I was folding around the wire to stitch to get it in. And this proboscis is extendable. <laughs> Just like that. So you can roll it up and just kind of play with it. I am a little worried that the wire might, you know, come out because of that. But maybe, hmm, now I'm thinking. Maybe if I stick some hot glue on this end, it'll hold the wire better so it doesn't slide at the other end if kids are, you know, rolling and unrolling it as much. So, we gotta, we gotta move on this. We're, we're, we're on a ticking clock now, you guys. This is it. It's exciting. It's like, whew. okay. It's almost there. I'm waiting a little because I, I really do want to put some hot glue in here now before I stitch it up. I'm just like, oh, yeah, that'll do. Thank you. Stuff it right down in there. Okay. Perfect. And just hold it for a minute. It isn't super hot right now, but it's enough that it'll seep into the felt and really hold it. And yeah, that's perfect. Okay. That'll hold. Okay, I'm gonna set the eyes aside for a second.
closer this time. Okay, Miko's voting closer this time. So caterpillars out here are like, what am I doing? I'm just like eating leaves all day and then it becomes a butterfly and it's like, oh, here I am. Something like that. It's just an object, but it has this whole narrative in my head. <laughs> okay. So here's how I'm going to do this. Okay, picture in my head. I am going to come in from all the way. Oh, I'm going to tilt you down again so you can see what I'm doing. Come in from all the way over here and tuck a bit of this tail to come over. Come on. And then let it go all the way in, but pinch it, okay? Stitch back around and then tie a knot. And then it is instantly hidden and I don't have to worry about it later. Ta-da, thread coming out of nowhere. In, stick this guy. Try to position this so you can see a bit. Here we go with the dark thread again. It's definitely why I um, wanted to get as much of this like dark on dark done off camera because I know you can't see this as well. But uh, the proboscis had to wait because it's stitched on, you know, the elastic closure. Okay, coming up through here. This is basically a whip stitch again. I'm just like through the loop and through the proboscis over and over and over again and just like attaching that. But I can position it a little as I go. So when that pulls taut, then I know it'll stay there and I can place another one further over and start to really get a shape on that. There we go. I know my hands are mostly in the way of this really. Jessica votes closer too. Cool, definitely going with closer then. Two, maybe three more stitches on this guy. Come on, you gotta stay in there. Please don't make me thread you. Here's one. And two. Bring that one up. And knotting in the same place. No, get back in there. Come here, come here. Okay. And, then you. and then over through to the other side to tuck this tail. Magic! All right, put you in the needle book and trim you. Tuck to tuck. and place our eyes. <laughs> you can kind of like squidge it closed a little bit and it stays. Like that's not terrible. It's not as crazy looking as like Wah! It'll do. You can just like stick it. I like that, okay. So eyes closer. Do you guys mean like, like cross-eyed closer, like, like this? Now that the proboscis is on, and I'm seeing that all together, it actually looks pretty decent to me. Cool. You're both voting closer, so I'm going closer. And glue gun is hot. We have three minutes. I'm counting. We're doing this. 
good little dollop. Da -da -da -da. You know what? Looking at these, I think I had them backwards. Oh, thank goodness I noticed. Okay. Whew. Eyelashes were pointing the right way, but they were all ski wampus. Like the big one was on top, like fling, ding, ding. <laughs> the opposite of a cat eye. Or no, maybe uh, something like that. One or the other. Got a bit sticking out here. Let that cool and trim it. And get our other eye on. Looking at this dead on to get an even. Oof, ouch. Got our burn in for this project. Okay. Oh, that smarts. Okay. Whew. <laughs> nice catch. Yeah, that could have been interesting. We'd make it work and trim it up, but just doing it the right way is so much more satisfying the first time. <laughs> Instead of being satisfying the second or third time. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. All right. Da -da -da -da. Let me scooch this in for you guys and trim that. Where am I? The junk scissors. A little, there we go. Good, good. It's done. <laughs> it's like, it's done, done. It's done. It's totally done. <laughs> oh my goodness. It has wings. It has antennae. It has a proboscis, which is weird we say proboscis because it's spelled with an O, like proboscis. Proboscis. English is weird. It's probably Latin. Latin's weird too. Latin's the root of English. Not the point. It has a rainbow tail to help pull it through. It has six little legs all up on its under belly and the is that the abdomen, I think? It has to be, because that's the middle, the belly, like the abdomen, right? And you open it up. I'm going my tiptoes. Different camera angle. I haven't done this one before. It's kind of fun. You gotta tuck the proboscis tuck the opposite of tuck like shove it up away this way let's get it da -da -da. shove it through pull that it's all on camera for those things up <laughs> and then inside the butterfly okay you have to shove the wings down for this transition you can't see it again hold on let me get you up on the mannequin again. Pardon my reach. <coughs> so that you can actually see everything I'm doing. How's that? Is that good? Ish. There we go. Old school. Okay. Yeah, you gotta push this up out of the way when you turn that over and then tuck the wings down inside so that when you go to tuck everything into the caterpillar, you can pull it, like scrunch it toward the head, all of that inside so that the opening is actually kind of like central and then push it out toward the ends and skidge it. It is occurring to me now then we never did the toggle closure. That's just too bad. My bad, guys. Okay. But I think it'll be okay. Put it all together. Like so. So it's all prepped and put together. The face is perfectly intact. It looks all caterpillar -y and it still goes ah, 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 ah. and then when the caterpillar is ready and it's full and it's eaten all of its leaves, it 
finds a nice cozy spot in a tree, on a leaf or a branch or a twig, and it makes a cocoon. And, and it just hangs out for a while. We'll pretend that's on purpose, like so. Just like that. Cocoon. And then when it's ready, it slowly emerges and its wings are all wet and it's waking up and just whittling its way out of its cocoon until it wakes up and says hello and spreads its wings. And flies away. <laughs> you guys, we did it. <laughs> we did it. It's done. And it works. And it has a proboscis. So fun. <laughs> and we are right on time. Only three minutes over. Ha. -ha. So <laughs> butterfly. Oh my goodness. Turn you off. <laughs> I think I've done this at the end of every section. I'm just like, ah! it works. It totally works. Oh my goodness. Squidgy little goofy, funny. <laughs> it's little legs. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for helping with this and tuning in. This is so fun. I am just thrilled with it. Oh my goodness. We had our fails and our fail harders and it's just come together and it's gorgeous and I am so happy. <laughs> we did it. It's fabulous. All right, I really need to go. I don't know what I'm doing on Friday, but I will be here two o'clock, two days from now doing something interesting. I'll figure out which project I want to work on and we can just hang out and make stuff because that's what I do. <laughs> we make stuff. Okay. Hmm. I will definitely make a video, just a quick little post to throw up on YouTube of the transition up close so that you can really see that and the details of the wings up close and things things that are easier to film and you know edit together so that you can look back and really see the details and how it came together and everything. So exciting. I love the silly little tails. Just like, woo, it's flying so quickly. Phew. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. Okay. I will see you on Friday and we'll make something. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you guys. All right, deuces, everybody. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs>